project, at least in our, in our, in our situation, the main beneficiaries are the labs. Okay. That's why they were so keen on the project. That's why they supported it with great zeal and perseverance right way through. Uh, it saved them some staff. It saved them some risk. Uh, it probably saved them also some uh, other operating costs. Um, it has improved the laboratory service in those respects. Uh, has it benefited the ward staff in the same way? Uh, they are a bit um, cool on that subject. It doesn't save them the time. Uh, may save them some risk. Uh, um, there are one or two downsides I'll, I'll mention in the feedback coming through to in a moment. Um, phlebotomy also I'll come through to in a moment. This is, a, this is like a three-way story. It's between the person who makes the request, which may be on or off the ward, the person who's collecting the sample on the ward or sometimes in the vicinity of outpatients and the labs uh, and joining up those three points in a way that eliminates risk uh, at each point wrong patient or wrong request, and the delays which are associated with those errors, leaving aside the dangers that are associated uh, with those errors. Um, and there are, obviously you're requesting, provided you have a certain other benefits, you can, you can see what you've requested pre previously. Um, that's not quite so wonderful if you're in the habit of ordering the same test once or twice a day, being told that doesn't actually benefit you that much. But there are some benefits of a system which has got some memory of what's been requested, and that can help to eliminate wasteful duplication sample collection, which is not good for the patient, let alone for efficiency, of course. So that's the overall process. Um, and in a second, I'll walk you through how that works with the kit. Um, we have an electronic patient record supplied by a company called uh, GraphNet. Um, and one of the things we were able to do was to plumb that through to, uh, as a lot of people do, of course, to other systems. You could select a patient in EPR, click an icon, it would take you through to the e-requesting system. Okay. You then go through some fairly quick screens with luck to select your, your favorite, your routine sample, and say a few things about urgency and about sample collection. Who, who's going to select the sample? Is it urgent? Can it be done today? Do you want it done next week? Um, uh, and then over to the phlebotomy service, which does most of the sample collection, not all of course, and they can then see what needs to be done, and they can plan their journeys around the wards um, and, to, and to the bedsides uh, and do their jobs at the bedside. Um, at the bedside, they can uh, they collect their samples. They print their labels on the spot, having identified in real time against the patient um, using a Bluetooth uh, little um, uh, portable label printer. I should say we had, it won't surprise anyone um, who's had similar um, experience. Um, nightmares about is used like getting the label stationary exactly right. And indeed track line helps with, with that very matter. But there was, a, there was a little line on the back of each uh, perforated label. Um, and if that wasn't, wasn't what it should be, you got a malfunction in the printed label. Um, now, anecdote, this is an interesting trust anecdote perhaps. Um, we've rationalized some of our purchasing uh, recently. Um, and we issued a, a new contract to, uh, to another company to act as our general uh, purchasing provider of printed stuff, including, including, including labels for, uh, for, for samples. Um, and they offered to find us a cheaper supplier. Uh, and they went off to the marketplace and they had another supplier of labels which they thought were the right shape and size, but unfortunately didn't actually uh, tick that particular box which had caused us nightmares three years ago when we were trying to go live. Um, so there's a whole series of, of uh, little elements of the, the technological um, solution here, and they're all vulnerable to um, somebody who might be coming along later to make efficiency savings and changes. So you have to be vigilant on a number of fronts with these things. Um, so having done that, uh, you will then be able to uh, pull out the request, uh, uh, go to the patient, identify what's, what's been asked for, identify the sample type, identify the container type, um, and then when you finish, get a label printed, which will be the right, the right label for that sample and for that container. That will then go down to the laboratory reception, as we'll see in a moment. That's just a very vanilla screen from Anglia Rice, but it's, uh, it's a configurable system, and therefore you can identify ward by ward, specialty by specialty, what are your routine 
common order sets designed in a way that you can reduce the number of clicks it takes to do the bottom step. Now that's uh, not, nothing magical about that, but AngularEyes is actually a reasonably serviceable version of that um, in our local experience. Again, sorry, this is training your, your eyesight a little bit, but that's the um, important part of the phlebotomy planning process. The phlebotomy manager opens this up and they get a list of what they need to do on a daily basis um, for um, uh, phlebotomy sample collection on each ward. Um, and they got the opportunity to have particular uh, instructions uh, relating to issues about any particular sample collection that needs to be done. That's the, the way it works. Um, there's some volunteer uh, medical staff illustrating it at the bedside. Um, you point to where you down at that angle and that will then scan the barcode on the patient's wrist. Okay. Um, is that ideal for, um, in terms of economics? Um, I'll come back to, to that a little bit further. But it, it, for the phlebotomists, it, it, it works. Um, uh, take home messages, the phlebotomy like, like the system and philosophy team seem to have benefited from the system. Um, we think it's improved our phlebotomy service and that's quite an important thing to address. Um, then you can got views uh, looking, again this is, this is from the phlebotomy side, you can see um, what requests have been made and what containers are required for each sample. Uh, down there you've got the um, a phlebotomist, a member of the team who's, who's doing his planning process. Um, in his office. Um, that's, that's the label that you get uh, and uh, uh, there are clearly some safety advantages in not printing them before you go to the bedside in terms of the probability of getting the right label um, and that's one of the key points about this. The point about the barcode is that the barcode can be scanned uh, at reception, that saves time, that saves, error, that saves error and that allows additional automation possibilities. Uh, so this is a contrast, um, beauty, beauty, uh, uh, beauty contest, if you like, between the national program and our local solution enabled by part of the national program. The way it works, uh, we understand, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, at CERNA sites, uh, is, is that you, you do your request and then on the ward, um, you get, they'll get printed out at the nursing station in a big pile for somebody to pick up and take to the right patient to the right place. The requests and the labels are printed on the same sheet. Okay. Uh, there is some amateur risk associated with, with, that, with that process. Um, in our situation, they're only printed when you get to the bedside and only after you have identified the patient positively, obviously not only by technology but also by the, the standard four questions that you, you ask them if they are conscious at the time uh, and which are standard operating policy. So this um, describes where we where roughly where, where we've got to. I'll just recap. Um, and we've done we've done uh, imaging requesting uh, uh, as, uh, and a number of other service requests for that matter, as, as well as uh, diagnostic laboratory test requests, um, still to be done at patients, um, uh, and that can be a particular challenge in certain particular very intense and busy um, outpatient clinic settings. Um, we have done lung function tests also, uh, and actually the story about wrist bands is relevant to that too. Our, our, our current intention, which we're carrying out, is to ensure that each outpatient has a wristband on their wrist, uh, and that that will be checked at each port of call uh, during their visit. Um, that's e each diagnostic service they visit. The reception will have a scanner, and they'll use that to identify the patient and check them electronically into their system. Uh, and that's something that has been kind of mandated by our, our service managers. It's not the IT driven. Um, they see that as being quite a major step forward in terms of identification um, at all points. Uh, blood product um, uh, requesting and administration. Uh, we've been dreaming of for about three years um, uh, and we haven't yet got a solution that looks entirely right. There's a kind of three-way choice at the moment between our intensive care system, ISIP, former Phillips Careview. That would be probably ideal for the high dependency areas, but they haven't fully implemented the required uh, blood product solution at the moment. Angular Eyes uh, itself has a phlebotomy module they launched um, 
a year or two ago. Um, but unfortunately for us, it doesn't handle a situation where you want to be able to remotely issue, uh, authorize the use of um, blood products away from uh, the central point. Um, what we want is you've got, you've got fridges in theaters, you've got fridges in, in intensive care, et cetera. And they can hold stocks which can be, can be uh, committed and made available remotely, um, not only from the central point. The other, the other well-known product, forgive me for getting their current name, Olympus, um, uh, Oxford's, um, Oxford Radcliffe's their, their, their star site, um, they've got quite an impressive solution there. Um, there are issues about the integration of that with other with trust systems. So we haven't actually carried out one of our dreams that drove this entire thing, which was joining up the entire blood product cycle. And with time, I'm sure uh, an available solution will become uh, mature and, and, and able to be deployed. Um, so what were the challenges? Um, well, almost every part of the, um, the technology, every stage of it, there were issues getting it right in the first instance. Um, scanning. Um, uh, the, the issue with scanning uh, is uh, that not all of our war staff have taken PMCA. <coughs> Sorry to say. Um, uh, there have been one, two issues with the MCA. Some have been resolved over a three-year period. Um, uh, but in some cases, it's taken about three years to resolve all, <coughs> those, all of those issues. Um, the, 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 some, some of the firmware um, uh, uh, features in the MCA were not quite as robust, not quite as mature enough for uh, live uh, clinical use without, without mishap. Um, that's very substantially improved within the last few months, actually. There are some issues with the MCA we've got to this day, regrettably, very infuriating for us, uh, and we sometimes think it's those Luddites in the wards, uh, nursing staff who kind of uh, you know, decide to uh, uh, blame the IT for uh, difficulties of daily work. Um, but there are some issues which ward, staffs, ward staff have taken to only moderately well, and there are quite surprising issues to us, like the fact that staff find it hard to actually put the thing back into its docking station correctly in such a way that it will recharge. You know, that that, that, that might, might surprise an IT professional. Our ward staff are not, are not dumb. They're obviously technically proficient in many respects. Um, they're often using IT in multiple ways on a daily basis. That was a tricky issue. Um, we're actually trying to see whether we can, as was mentioned earlier, use the ability to you know, plug the other kind of mobile phone style thing into the side of the box rather than putting it into the docking station. But we have a variety of problems and complaints of that sort. And another, another one is the ergonomics of the, the scanning wristband uh, with the MCA device doesn't have to be particularly liked by um, many ward staff. Um, <coughs> the success story has been with the labs and the phlebotomists to whom these processes are kind of core to their daily life, if you like. Uh, for ward staff, sample collection is not something they do all the time, not something they're doing most of. They do it when they have to. Um, it's not their it's not their be-all be -all and end-all. Um, and therefore, there are things that they don't find quite so easy when they do it on an occasional basis, and they haven't taken the MCA in quite the, quite the same way for that purpose. They find this, this style, if you've got a patient who's rather awkward, you've got to reach across the bed, etc., or the barcode's not pointing in the right direction, um, it's just that bit more awkward. So we've got a few areas who have more or less kind of demanded um, that we have given an alternative. Not all, but some. And for some, we've recently offered them an alternative, which is um, actually uh, a netbook um, uh, with a handheld scanner uh, and a similar a Bluetooth laser printer goes with it. So a little combination of technology in those three items. Oh, and the trolley to put them on, and uh, they request also a security uh, cable to attach the netbook to the trolley to minimize the likelihood of it being nicked. Um, um, which is a, a big worry to, to ward staff. We've not had a single MCA stolen, by the way, in three years. Um, we made sure that they weren't very attractive in terms of being able to go on the web or that they, they have a kind of lockdown front end, an image front end, which is designed so you can only use it for the, the application you, you built it for. You'll find it rather hard to, to, to walk off into the street and use it for any other purpose. And we haven't lost any. We did actually lose, a, lose a, one netbook within our first month of deployment of, of netbooks. Trust, obviously, are looking into this issue at the moment. Um, but for some people, um, the MCA 